I'll be showing Math Progress in Teams for Education. Math Progress is our newest learning accelerator. It allows educators to generate all sorts of practice problems for students to work on, and it's great for the ages of 9 all the way through 18. Math Progress is fully rolled out and globally available today, so let's get started. I'm here in Teams for Education and I'm the educator. I'm here in my class and the first thing I'm going to do is switch over to assignments. Down in the lower left, I'll click the Create button. And note there's a new option here, Learning Accelerators. All four of them are here, Reading Progress, Search Progress, the new Math Progress, and the new Speaker Progress. You can access them directly from the Create button. Now in this case, I'm going to click on New Assignment and I'm going to show the other spot where you can add Learning Accelerators to an assignment. Right here is the button Learning Accelerators, and I can choose Math Progress. Now before I do that, we'll give this assignment a title and some instructions. Some instructions. And just for fun, we have our AI instructions for assignments. I'll click Add Detail, and it's going to quickly add this in nice details. There we go. We'll choose to keep it, and I'm going to choose to add some sparkle because that adds a little bit of color and fun. Okay, some emojis added, and we will click on Keep It. Now, next we'll click on the Learning Accelerators button, and I'm going to click on Math Progress. This launches Math Progress, and this is for the educator. This is going to let me generate my own set of questions, or I'll be able to create my own or mix and match. First, we'll click down Category. Numbers and Operations, Fractions, Expressions and Equations, and Algebra. So I might choose Expressions and Equations, and then choose a topic. Linear Equations, Quadratic, polynomial factorization. So there's lots of little explorations you can do here, all these different topics. So logs, polynomial, powers and roots. You have a lot of different things you can do. Might be more simple for numbers and operations. Math Progress handles everything from fourth grade all the way through high school and your senior year. Now I'm gonna choose expressions and equations and for the topic, I will choose quadratic equations. Now I'm gonna choose generate. This will quickly generate a bunch of questions for me. And I can choose any of these that I want. So maybe I want this one, this one, this one. Now over on the right, it's adding these questions as I click on the option. Maybe I want that one. So I have a bunch of options right here that I've chosen. And you can see right here, it's added them. Maybe I add one right here and it turns out, you know what, I don't want that. If I click little X there, that will take that one away. So I've quickly added some questions here and you can experiment with what you want to do. Now maybe I want to create my own as well and add to these. So I have the ones that were generated and I want to create my own. So if I click add a question, I can choose a category. So same thing, I've got all these different options right here. Maybe I want to choose something very simple like numbers and operations and I'm going to choose multiplication and division. So you have multiple choice or you can choose short answer. And short answer doesn't allow you to have any multiple choice. They will put in whatever they need. But what's nice is there is a really rich math calculator. So here's the basic you can see. And then there's formulas. So everything from algebra, trigonometry, statistics, calculus. So a lot of options for your formulas here, even the Greek alphabet. So it's really rich and you can experiment with this math calculator. And just to note, when you create a question with a math calculator, your students will also be able to use that exact same math calculator in terms of when they're filling out that question. In this case, I'm going to choose multiple choice and we will have a very simple one. Please multiply these numbers. So maybe I'm going to go here and I'm going to have 8 times 9 and we'll close the calculator. Now automatically it gives me this option right here, 72. It'll also add in some distraction answers as well. So what that means is it'll look at what the equation is and put in things that might be similar to what is correct but not actually correct. And so depending on what type of math problem you have, our math engine will suggest a bunch of what are called distraction answers. And now I have the right answer that is marked, the number of points. I'm going to click Save. I could add another question right here. And what's nice is I can change the order of these things with a little arrow. I can delete it, I can copy, we'll just delete this one, I'm not going to fill it out. But I've added my one multiplication question to my math progress assignment. And what you can see is, in the lower right, that is there as well. So now I've got all my questions, I'm all set to go, and I'm going to click on next. You can see right here in the middle, I've got this set of questions all laid out, the right answers are already marked. I can edit this, so maybe I want to edit this one and I want to move it down one spot. 
So now it's moved down and I can delete it if I want, but in this case, I'll click save. There are also three nice options in the upper right, show your work. So maybe if I wanna have a picture or if I wanna put a link to a OneNote page in a notebook, I can show my work. So if the educator wants to have them show all the details of those math problems, Student rating, the students can rate, was this easy? Was it hard? Was it just right? This gives educators insights into what did the class think about how hard those problems were? And then shuffling the question order. This will let the questions be shuffled when the students open it so they won't all have the same order. Okay, I'm all set, we'll click done. And my math progress assignment is attached right here at the bottom. And now I will click assign. Okay, that assignment has gone out. We're gonna switch over to the student and chose what it looks like on that end. I'm signed in as a student and here is my assignment. I'm gonna go ahead and click this to open it up and we get a nice little starting area. So I'm about to start my math progress assignment. This has six questions. There's some information here and I will click get started. Okay, here we are. So the first question, solve for X. Now, I'm just gonna start guessing on a lot of these. They're just gonna start clicking. Now, how is this question? Was it easy, just right, or hard? Oh, that one's pretty hard. We'll go here, and oh, that was just right. Got this one. Oh, that one's pretty easy. Uh, oh, I do know this one off the top of my head. 72, that one was easy. So you can go through and start clicking and giving feedback on how easy or hard this was. Now, because I can attach work, on the right-hand side right here, you can see six out of six questions completed and attach work. So I can do that right down there. So click attach work and I'm gonna upload from device. I'm gonna upload two images. There we go. So I've got a nice image here of all that hard work that I was doing. Now in the case that I didn't wanna upload images and instead I wanted to attach a link from a OneNote page in a notebook, I'm gonna remove these images I can go down and say attach work. So share a OneNote page, I go here, and I can get a link to that page in my OneNote notebook. Could be a class notebook or it could be a standalone notebook. And there's more about how to do that here. Note that you can't have images and OneNote pages attached. You need to choose one or the other. So I'm gonna reattach those images that I had before. Okay, we are all set. I will click close. And my assignment is all ready to go. I'm gonna click turn in. All right, there's my turn in celebration. Now we'll switch back to the educator and we're gonna grade this. So I'm signed in as the educator and here's my math progress assignment that I pushed out. We'll open this up and we see that Ashley has turned hers in. So let's click Ashley. Now it's gonna automatically grade this for me, which is nice. Okay, I got 33% right. I've got 20 out of 60 total points. Now here's what's really cool. These are misconceptions. What type of errors did I make? And Math Progress will automatically categorize those. So there was a procedural mistake, there were three of those, and a negative value mistake, I made two of those. And when I click this, I can actually see trends. And this is sort of the progress part. So you can see that Ashley has been trending in terms of the different mistakes that she's been making, and you can see how she compares to the class. Here are a bunch of different assignments. There's all misconceptions. You can have absolute value misconceptions, basic operations, fractions. So I can even filter and see what type of errors were getting made. And so it's really easy to go and filter on these things. So that's a really nice feature that's built into Math Progress. You can also click on any of these right here. So here's the point total. I can see the reported difficulty hard versus just right versus easy versus not reported. You can see on all these different assignments in the past, oh, okay, these were a bunch of easy ones, there were some harder ones, and there were some just right ones. And you can see the different grades. So you can start to compare, okay, they did really good, but they thought all the questions were hard, or the reverse. It just gives you really interesting trends on some of these topics. And I can drop this down, and I can filter on all the different aspects. So maybe I wanna look at just the multiplication and division. Okay, here's some of those. Go back to the student report. There's all this great data. If I wanna filter on fractions, I can do that. Same thing, math categories, points, how many were correct. So lots of great ways to drill into these different topics and categories and see how things are going. And then I can choose class report, like I said before, and compare to the class, but I can also drop down and see this month, the previous month, last year, et cetera. So a lot of great information right baked into these little cards that you can click on. Okay, so I can go down here and I can see what's going on. You can see misconceptions are marked already. I can see procedural mistake was automatically marked, but if I wanna add a different one, maybe it was the exponents and roots as well. If 
for the one that I put in. So the generated questions, it'll auto do it. But for the manual questions, you can go and you can add those yourself. So a lot of great ways that you can go and figure this out. So you get a good sense of how much valuable information that you get. The student work is right here. So if you want to click, it'll put this and you'll have the questions over on the left. You can see the next one. Okay, that looks great. We'll close that. So I can also give feedback and I can return this. So I could say, needs a little more work, check out some of the solutions and I'll show what that looks like as a final step for the student. So this is the teacher review experience. I've graded this 20 out of 60 points. We're gonna return this back to Ashley. Now we'll switch over to Ashley and we'll see how she can work through the problems that her teacher returned. Okay, Kara Coleman has returned the assignment. Here it is. Now as the student, I'm gonna open up Math Progress and we'll see how I did. Okay, 33%, I didn't do super great. Now here are some of the misconceptions. The best part of math progress on the student side is they can see the solution steps and I can click here and I can see steps using the quadratic formula or steps for completing the square. So I have all the steps baked right in and I can explore, see exactly how I got it incorrect and what I might wanna do as well as the misconceptions. So this one was a negative value, see the solution steps, We'll see steps using factoring. So all of our math solver capabilities are built right in so the student can work through and see those steps. The other thing that I didn't show on the student side is they do have a math calculator. So depending on the problem type, students can open up that math calculator and work through in the same way as paper. This hopefully gives you a nice little tour of how math progress works. This is rolled out globally and we encourage you to try it today. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.